Hello everyone, I'm Plasma Warriors, me like call me, that guy, the Afro. Well, it's time for the most important part of my year, the people and things that made every possible good thing happen. And that is the smartest people of the year of 2018. Now allow me to explain. The rules for this criteria is simple. I don't have to personally like somebody, but they have to be able to be smart enough to do something spectacular or amazing that even I can't deny is awesome. Yes, I will be actually praising people from the Democratic Party. Yeah, I know this is going to sound stupid considering how I know people are going to say, well, you're a you're a conservative. Well, that doesn't mean people can't be smart on the left either, but I want to go ahead and make one point before I start. As you may have heard already, there was somebody or something that could have been on this list. And, well, let's just say they were stupid about what they were doing in another video. I will address that point myself later. That's not the reason why I want to make this list. I want to make this list for the people who have been smart year around. Like, Number 10, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Democrat House member-elect. Okay. Yeah, I know. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. But those of you who believe in socialism, allow me to make it very clear. It's a complete failure. However, that does not take away what Cortez has done. I'm not going to keep saying her name over and over and over and over again. She doesn't seem to have very many answers. I hate to say it. I look at her in a lot of her interviews, and it's abolish ICE, get rid of this, make everything single payer. It's not gonna be not gonna be viable. I hate to tell you this, but I'll use an analogy real fast. Anyone have seen the original Nickelodeon run of Doug the cartoon? He made a campaign promise about giving everyone free candy and soda. Well, of course. Everyone cheers, but it was fantasy. He becomes president of the United States, and he promises the same thing, candy and soda for free, and then he gets hit with the bill. This is what socialism is. You're going to get hit with the bill. However, that does not take away the fact that winning in the right place is vital. At 21, she's done something that very well could be considered unbelievable. Of course, this is liberal, heavy New York, not conservative, red Arizona or Texas we're talking about here. So at the very least, she did something in her area that can be useful. Now, I'm not going to put her in the top five anytime soon. If she can survive a few more runs, maybe we'll see her be a potential presidential candidate, but don't count on it anytime soon. She's only 21. You have to be 35. So she's got a long way to go before we can even consider that. I'm not wait a second. Aren't there rules about age constraints in the house? I don't, I'm not saying she's too young, but I have to double check what that age is. So, number nine, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, an NHL hockey team. Now, if they would have won three more games, oh, they would be in the top five. Like that, no problem. They won game one of the Stanley Cup Finals, but, of course, the Washington Capitals took the other four. An amazing save in game two. Oh, one of the best saves of the year. The point, though, is they were an expansion team that got to the Stanley Cup Final. That in itself is impressive. But what really shocked me is how they got Mark Andrew Fleury in the expansion draft. Once you got that guy who's won – multiple Stanley Cups, and you're looking at this like, wow, you're actually letting somebody be this good go to this team? I don't know. Of course, Pittsburgh Penguins had another goalie. I can't remember what his name is. The big reason why this team actually is on this list, it's not just because they made a Stanley Cup Finals run. It proved that Las Vegas can be a viable sports market. I mean, let's think about this. Yeah, we've heard about it with the XFL's Las Vegas Outlaws, but that was a one-time thing. I actually liked the XFL originally. I know it sounds crazy. I thought they were just playing for passion more than anything else, even though it wasn't the best 
competition league. But now you actually have something that says, yes, we can actually have sports franchises here. So you're going to see the Raiders come in in a few months. Good for them, actually. Number eight, Nick Foles, quarterback for the NFL's Philadelphia Eagles. You're a backup quarterback in the NFL. You don't get many reps in, pra reps in practice. You don't get a lot of time to actually hone your skills. I don't know why they can't have more time, but they don't have it. So he comes in when Carson Wentz is hurt. So they lose the final few games of the regular season. However, they already clinched the number one seed in the NFC playoff. I heard that he actually had time to do a little bit of work. Now, all you have to do is win three games at this point, not four. Remember, we get a first-round bye if you have the top two seeds in the conference. That's when Nick Folds turned it on. And I mean, boom, goes the dynamite. He turned around the team throwing three touchdowns in the big game. I can't say the name. I don't want the NFL to come on me and you know, strike the channel. But... He also caught one for himself and was named, rightfully so, MVP of the major thingamajigger. Gosh, I don't want to get sued. But now the Philly special is one of the biggest plays in Super Games thing history. Did I mention he was traded by the Eagles once before? Yeah, he actually played for the team before this season. And congratulations, he plays for it now. With a ring. Number seven, Lindsey Graham, Republican senator. Now, take what I said about Cortez and apply it here. Only now we're talking about a conservative. Nobody likes Lindsey Graham. I didn't like Lindsey Graham. He's one of those never Trumpers who would bang on your door saying, I don't want this guy's policies. So what happened? Why am I all of a sudden giving props to somebody who I feel like is even worse than Chuck Schumer? Well, Brett Kavanaugh, the biggest gift outside of Donald Trump the Republicans have gotten from anybody in the last 10 years. These hearings were legitimately a reason for the Republicans to hold on to the Senate. Let me say it again. Without the Brett Kavanaugh hearings, Republicans don't hold the Senate. Make sure we understand that. But what Lindsey Graham actually did, besides just sit there and say, I'll confirm you, whatever, he actually stood up and said something. <gasps> oh, my gosh. It's a miracle. His message was to the Supreme Court, basically to Sotomayor and Kagan. They were both Obama level of hair, hair, uh, pointees that um, – Lindsey Graham voted for. So he basically said, you tell K Sotomayor and Kagan, tell them I sent you. Because I voted for them. I would never put them through what you've been put through. He wasn't up for election, re-election this year. Well, if he were, he probably went by 40 points. I'm sorry. It's pretty big. But now, all of a sudden, we actually want to hear more of Lindsey Graham. Yeah. I'm not going to be super impressed what's going to happen long term, but at least I can hear him speak about something brilliantly. Speaking of speaking and re-elections, number six, Nancy Pelosi, Democratic Council member. Now, Pelosi has a bigger problem. She's been the opposite of Cortez. She's just been there forever. And that's part of the reason why she's on this list, is that, again, Democrats now have the House again. Now, that seems like a big liability for Donald Trump, but he still has more power in the Senate with his cabinet there. And, of course, the most important piece is going to be the judicial electors, the judicial, judicial confirmations and stuff like that. That's going to be a point. But the point is, you, she is legitimately, I hate whatever Trump's done. I'm just going to go ahead and stop him. But that's not why she's on this list. If you look back at some of my videos, back six years, in fact, about the 2012 election, I said Pelosi was done. 
I said she's dead and buried. She doesn't have a dang chance in the universe to still survive. And yet, so be it. She's back in the speakership of the house. Now, I wrote this a few days before things unraveled. I don't think I'm going to drop her down below uh, um, Lindsey or anyone else. Like, Lindsey Graham's going to have to be at seven because I don't see him getting any lower. But the whole wall thing is just, that's going to sting a little bit because she said, we didn't have the votes in the current house to pass it. And they passed it. Unfortunately, the Senate's just like, we don't really care. Look, I'm not going to say it's going to be a good thing. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a nightmare for two years. But uh, I will go ahead and say it. If you, she didn't give up. And unlike a certain other person who sold for a job, Hillary Clinton, she's stuck in there. Yeah, the district wanted her, so I'm not going to complain. Number five, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing the last name right, Bob Bafford, thoroughbred racehorse, racehorse trainer. Again, with my autism. Oh, I pronounced the name right. Now, why is that? 2015, America Pharaoh, American Pharaoh became the first racehorse that's affirmed in 1978 to win the Triple Crown of Horse Racing. That's the Kentucky Derby the Preakness Stakes, and the Belmont Stakes in the same year. And you have to understand how these horse races are run. You only have three rows horses running these. So you can't do it again and again and again. You get one chance. Period. So Bafford, long considered one of the best trainers, if not the best trainers currently of all of her thoroughbred horse racing, Trained American Pharaoh to those victories. I think American Pharaoh actually went undefeated in his career. Three years later, he trained another one, Justify, and he won the Triple Crown. Remember, again, you only get one shot every year. So it's not a back-to-back -back since you trainers do work on many racehorses. But his ability to train two Triple Crown winners in such a short time has not been done before. It's only the second time a trainer has trained horses to win the Triple Crown twice. Jim Fitzsimmons also did it. He trained Gallant Fox, who won in 1930 in Omaha in 1935. So the gap was five years then. Bafford's gap is only three. So I'm not a big fan of horse racing. I really am not. I mean, I get it. But the feat is so rare, it's fine, hard to find any trainer in the world to do it one time, let alone twice. So Bafford, he's got some time to possibly pick up number three. Keep that in mind as we continue. If he can do that, well, <laughs> I don't care what year it's going to be. He'll probably end up being the number one smartest person of the year that time. Number four, Razor Fist, an internet personality, mainly on YouTube, but also on Tumblr. Tumblr. <laughs> now, this is what happens when you actually have a blend of being amazing in three different fields. Political science, gaming, and metal. The third one, I have no clue whatsoever to talk about. However, the point is, when you're able to make great points on all three while still being able to swear like South Park and be so awesome on it, you deserve to be on this list. Unlike other YouTubers whose political commentary will cost them dearly, All Lives Matter is not racist. I don't care what Scarfing Scarves thinks. Don't give me that crap. Razorfist doesn't just go up and attack on people on the left, however. This is the point. He also will hit people on the right. He's attacked John McCain before for what he's seen McCain do and not do. He's gone after Donald Trump before. So he's not just coming out here as a libertarian specifically to insult the left. Quite the opposite. He goes on everybody as he sees it. So this is a good way to go about it. It's not just one side that's all. However, 
he's with me on one thing. I can't stand the video game awards. I don't know why people keep trotting this out like this is some super special awesome thing. I'm not saying God of War wasn't a great game. I'm just saying, really? Above Red Dead Redemption and Smash Ultimate? We're going to have to do some major convincing there. But, again, the heavy metal aspect is something that I don't see a lot of on any side. I would like to go ahead and say one video really impresses me. His talk about wasp w dot a dot s dot p literally that's their it's acronym for something i don't know this guy actually takes a serious look into a heavy metal band and one of their themes one of their major songs was called animal <clears throat> f like a beast I mean, seriously, you take that kind of stuff seriously like that and be amazing in commentary about it, and I gotta applaud you. So, yeah, he deserves to be on here. Number three, Donald Trump, United States president. Now, before you even go and say, oh, you're just being a jayhead, big chip, look. I'm not even going to start with the whole I political, he's better than this person or that person. I gave you two different leftists who belong on this list, even though I didn't agree with them. My time, my list, thank you very much. But immediately, the first thing that happened this year that was amazing was, oh my gosh, North and South Korea aren't going to war against each other? <laughs> To quote the alternate history hub, South Korea can barely feed themselves. How the heck are they going to win a war against the United States? My thoughts exactly. So going right out to the point, Trump called out Kim Jong-il. Said, no, you're not going to do this. You're going to be a out here and you're going to deepalize or we're going to just start getting on you. Now, the government shutdown, people might think it's a bad thing, but remember, Obama had two shutdowns in his time in office. I mean, again, people wanted to vote for Donald Trump in a lot of places for the wall. I know you don't want to hear this, but the southern border wall was a key point. And yes, he wants to build it. And even though he's lost the House, he still has the Senate. The Senate is probably the more important piece. And you cannot forget, he's in a slightly stronger position than he was two years ago because people now see nothing's getting it done if we keep letting everyone else just trample on every, everything the president just doesn't sit there and do. He's got to take charge. And I think that's one of the biggest things that Trump has done this year is even though critics are going to pan, pan he actually has taken control, whether you like it or not. Has he done as good as he did last year? No, but he's doing pretty dang good. Heck, I don't want to get nuked by North Korea. Number two, Brandon Starka, founder of the Walk Away Movement. Hashtag Walk Away Movement. Considered one of the most viral internet movements of 2018, all you have to do is look up hashtag walk away on YouTube and you'll find no shortage of former liberals from African Americans from Detroit to drag queens from New York, all with the same message. They're done voting Democrat after many years, even decades of not seeing progress. Now, a person who started basically as as liberal as you can possibly get. New York City hairstylist and actor Brandon Stalker. It's not exactly in a world where conservatives are well liked. His video entitled Why I Left the Democrat Party on June 29th is probably the most important video outside of the <clears throat> <clears throat> Logan Paul one, because it actually makes some people understand sometimes 
your political views can be just too far stupid. You're just a stupidly conservative, stupidly liberal. For the first time, somebody addressed their political views and said, you know, this isn't working for me. I'd rather go like this without being too toxic in nature. Again, I don't like stupid conservative and stupid liberal. I want somebody who can think in and outside the box. So, yeah, it's okay to walk away because Brandon was probably going to be number one on my list if the Republicans held the House. But I don't think you're going to have any complaints about who's number one. Now, before I begin at my number one person of the year, let me say this. To get to this point, you have to be damn near legendary. You're not going to get here if um, uh, I kind of walked in this in one one thing, one one game or one one race in the house. Uh uh. No. If you're the number one smartest person of the year, you have to be a living legend. Or in the number one person's case, the number one smartest person of 2018 is Stanley, comic book writer. Deceased November 12th. And I don't think there's anyone other than George Lucas, who created Star Wars, or Shigeru Miyamoto of Nintendo, that can make a claim that they did more for their branch of ent entertainment in this generation. Period. Or even equal. I don't think you can find anyone who can make that claim. Stan Lee's projects. X-Men. Spider-Man, Iron Man, Fantastic Four, The Incredible Hulk. I could go on and on and on. I mean, even a non Stanley character, Deadpool, was a box office hit. So you've got to look at this on two different fronts. He might not be the big, big superstar when it actually comes to making movies, but he was one of those guys who saw this explode. If you want to look at this, as just the movies, okay, maybe I can hear some con context, but these movies don't happen without Stan Lee. These movies don't happen without his charisma. They don't happen without his character. They don't happen without his heart at all. However, the number one reason why I put him on here is he still loved being with the fans to the very end. I don't know his final days. I'm not going to speak to that. But he would speak to the fans more often than I think any other kind of comic book creator could possibly imagine. I mean, he was doing videos on his Facebook page months before his death. Yeah, it's hard for him to go to these conventions. It's hard for him to go out and about. And every one of these moments is difficult for him at that point. And yet he still did it. Most people live in this bubble, especially when they're superstars nowadays, that, oh, I'm just not going to bother going to this place or talk to these people. But not Stan Lee. He did this until the very last moment he could. And, and yeah. We have people who are so smug, like, I'm a superstar, look at me, ha, ha, ha. You never got that from Stanley. And to me, that's why he's the number one smartest person of the year. Not just because of the universe he created. Not just because all of what has happened has been because of him. But because he loved giving back to his fans. And again, you have to be legendary to be on my smartest people of the year list. It's not easy to be number one. And yet Stan Lee could have done it maybe four or five times this decade. Maybe maybe you could say Donald Trump wins 2016. Okay, that's a fair point. Maybe in 2015, American Pharaoh's team in general was the team that finally did it. Win this triple crown. All right, that's fine. Maybe, I forgot, was it 2014 or 20? 
Maybe when LeBron James went out and blocked the layup attempt in Game 7 of the NBA Finals. I mean, you can make a case for a lot of people, but not very many can be really one of the smartest people of all time. I don't mean that as a hyperbole. Stan Lee can make my top 10 list of smartest people, at least in my lifetime, if not ever. Of course, that's going to be kind of hard to be number one. I mean, there's this guy named Jesus Christ here. Maybe you've heard of him. That guy could be number one all the time. But in all seriousness, 2018 had so many people who looked stupid, but again, outthought everyone. Again, I thought Nancy Pelosi should have been dead and buried years ago. I was wrong. I admit this. And again, it's not always about what my political views are. Yeah, I'm a conservative. I don't call myself a Republican. God, no. But still, it doesn't matter if your views are left or right. Take a moment here and just appreciate the fact that one of these days, you won't be around either. You know, appreciate the moment that, congratulations, I'm going to take a big dirt nap. Unfortunately, one out of one people die. So to make sure you are the smartest person you can be, just keep going with whatever you're good at. Don't have to make it a job and produce results. That's what I can say. Who knows? Maybe next year you come up with some breakthrough viral video. You'll be the smartest person of 2019. I look forward to it. Later.